The American Revolution has a sort of geographic history. It begins in New England. And then after New England, the British evacuate Boston in March of 1776. The focus of the war moves to the middle colonies, moves to New York, Pennsylvania. Uh, after a couple years down there, about three years down there, the British realize that it's pretty much of a stalemate in the middle colonies. And so they turn their attention to the south. Uh, they believe that in the south they'll find lots of Tories, lots of support. And so they shift their emphasis to the south, to Charleston, to Savannah. And they begin to try to subdue the south. That doesn't go very well either. In 1781, the British general in command of the British Army in the South, General Cornwallis, decides that his campaign in the Carolinas is not succeeding. And so he makes the decision to take his army and march it north to Virginia. His goal is twofold. One, he thinks that he may have more success in Virginia. And the other is that he's going to march his army to the coast of Virginia. Uh, to a place called Yorktown. There at Yorktown, he hopes that the British Navy will arrive either to bring troops to reinforce him or to help him leave. The British commander-in-chief in North America, General Cornwallis' superior, is General Sir Henry Clinton, and he commands in New York City. And so Cornwallis is depending then upon General Clinton to get his messages that he's coming to Virginia, coming to Yorktown, send help. It's a long march from the Carolinas all the way up to Virginia, and a number of small battles are fought. No great decisive battle, but at each battle, General Cornwallis grows weaker. He's losing men that he cannot replace, and the Americans are chasing him. Finally, he gets to Yorktown. And there at Yorktown, he builds entrenchments to defend himself. While Cornwallis is moving towards Yorktown, the Americans are making their move. General Washington was up on the Hudson River with his army, watching. He was watching the British in New York City. General Rochambeau, the French commander who has arrived, is with his army in Rhode Island. When Washington and Rochambeau realize what is happening in Virginia, that is that Cornwallis with his army is marching towards Yorktown, towards the Virginia coast, they come up with an idea. It's a very risky proposition and a very dangerous one. The plan is to move the French and American forces down south to besiege and take Cornwallis. It is an extraordinary idea for the 18th century. It would be difficult today. We're going to move two major armies simultaneously in secret because, of course, you don't want the British to know what's going on. But the deal is made. The French and the Americans are on the move. In the meantime, General Cornwallis is becoming ever more concerned about his own precarious position. He has his back to the sea. It becomes clear now that whoever controls the sea is going to control this moment. Rochambeau had sent word to the French fleet in the West Indies under the command of Admiral de Grasse. In the 18th century, it was the custom for naval squadrons in the West Indies to get out of there in the hurricane season. And so de Grasse had uh, been in communication with Rochambeau. And de Grasse more or less says to Rochambeau, I think I might come north with my fleet. You got anything for me to do? And all of these things come together in this most miraculous kind of way. Rochambeau, Washington, and de Grasse. And of course Rochambeau says, yeah, come on up. We're moving down to the Chesapeake. We've got this underway. We can use your help. And de Grasse does. In the meantime, General Clinton in New York begins to see what's happening. At first, he doesn't quite see the picture. He doesn't have good spies. He doesn't have the right intelligence. And so he dispatches a British squadron down to the Chesapeake. 
that British squadron engages with de Grasse at the Battle of the Chesapeake, as it's called. The Battle of the Chesapeake between these French and British forces goes on for a couple of days. It's one of those typical 18th century naval battles at sea, uh, individual ship engagements, a lot of confusion. Remember, these are vessels powered by sail. You don't just turn the engine on and go starb at a port. But in the end, the British withdraw. It's always been an open question, were the British defeated at the Chesapeake? Well, one might argue that point. But however you might argue the point, in the end, the British fleet withdrew. Once the British fleet had withdrawn, Cornwallis's hopes are sunk. He has no escape, and he will not be reinforced. The Americans and the French, Rochambeau and Washington, now tighten the siege. Bombard continues. To, it's, a, it's a traditional, typical 18th century siege. Cornwallis's position is absolutely hopeless. And so, on October the 19th, 1781, Cornwallis his army surrenders to the Franco-American force. We should, by the way, always remember that it was a Franco-American force. In fact, when you tally up the number of soldiers and sailors present at Yorktown, they were far more French than Americans. In that final moment, by the way, on October the 19th, when the surrender ceremony takes place, always a ceremony in the 18th century. The two forces line up. The British lay down their muskets in traditional fashion. And then there's the moment when the general surrenders. Cornwallis wasn't there. He was, he said, ill. He was sulking in his tent. And so instead, he sends out a subordinate, General O'Hara. General O'Hara comes forward to surrender the British sword, and he actually approached General Rochambeau. Rochambeau looked at him and gestured to General Washington as the commander-in-chief. When General O'Hara approached General Washington, Washington, too, stepped aside. It would not be becoming for the commander-in-chief to accept the surrender from a subordinate officer. And so he invited General Benjamin Lincoln to come forward to take the British surrender. So General Lincoln actually took O'Hara's sword to complete this rather glorious and wonderful surrender. <laughs>